So chances are you might be thinking of wanting to play Awakened Tash. You're either already on the class and want to learn more, saw someone in your guild pop off a couple of wars on it, or might even just be a new player who thought it was cool. But Awakened Tash is pretty fun, but it's also kind of hard to learn at the same time and get used to. I've been playing the class for a bit, and even I think I can still improve on it. But with that being said, it's a high skill ceiling class that has a really great kit when it comes to 1v1, small scale, and ratting in large scale. Once you get comfortable with some of the tricks and combos in the guide, you can take it to AOS or RBF, practice, and then to Wars or Guild League. That way you just don't get flamed by your uh, guild mates while you're trying to get better. You don't have to follow this guide to the T. Hash is a class that uh, a lot of people freestyle on. There's a lot of playstyles and a lot of hashes with different builds. This guide is just a reflection of how I play the class. The first thing we're going to talk about is gearing, specifically evasion versus DR. And right now you're probably wondering if you can tag hash with whatever gear you're working with right now. But what will be better, evasion or DR? And at the highest gear, in my opinion, it's probably evasion if you have triple debos. Personally, I'm DR running for accuracy accessories right now and stacking human damage and some tankiness so I don't get deleted when I'm comboing someone. But I have three builds I'm going to show you that I think do decent. In this DR build, I'm running 5 piece accuracy with a disto. And this is the one I'm personally working towards since it gives me the option to kill pretty much anyone since I have the accuracy and damage to combo most people, aside from maybe Shy's running their evasion builds. Lunar and Turo's prices tanked pretty hard, making this build a lot easier to get. You can grind the silver out and buy all of what you're seeing off the market, and if you actually have the willpower to grind out the depots, you can replace the accessories in here with them until you have 3 set depo at the cost of accuracy for a lot more AP. Uh, me personally, I don't have the willpower to spend tens of billions of silver to wait for outfit orders to fill, or god forbid even buy vendor crons to tap a depo and have it downgrade until it hits pen 3 times. But for Crystals, I'm running High Tig, Glorious Olyukas, Bitter, Special Evasion, 2 Gin Vipers, 2 RBF Vipers, Elkars, Rebellious, and Ignore Grapple Res. I don't run raw human damage, because I'm sure most of you who have can vouch when I say you will get absolutely deleted before you can even start helicoptering on people, hence the Bitters. I don't run Corrupted either, since the damage from the 5 AP from Rebellious is kinda comparable, and the 175 HP is nice on DR. Not to mention Garmoths were made easier to get so people have slightly more special attack evasion, so Corrupted seemed like a worse option to me right now. You can still choose to run Corrupteds in this build though, since it's preference, but I think this is pretty solid for a crystal build. I'm also running Magic Accuracy Artifacts, uh, since Ash is a magic damage class, and I'm running Blight for the set effect. It's a debate between target openings versus Blight right now, and I've heard people say they feel Blight but not target openings and vice versa. Like I said, it's preference. Uh, the only downside to this build is you will be extremely squishy. Uh, people will probably just breathe on you and you will die, but you're given the option to kill pretty much anyone. Build 2 is pretty standard evasion dream build. Your 309 bracket and the ominous is there just to help with accuracy since the problem with this build is the lack of. If you're a PvE goblin and have the heart to spend your silver and time on enhancing depots, then go for it. But in this build, I have an evasion offhand since you aren't running a centaur or a sissel because you have debos. The only thing to increase your evasion gear-wise is going to be an evasion offhand. Uh, the offhand gives you 136 evasion at C20, so it's not a bad choice over Kudum since Kudum doesn't even give you half as much. The only problem is that it doesn't have the accuracy or the AP like Kudum does since it's 12 act for the offhand versus 25 for Kudum. Uh, it's your choice if you want to run Kudum in this build, but in my opinion, Kudum doesn't give you the evasion you need to survive in fights. Uh, if you ran Kudum, casters with two accuracy accessories will probably 2-3 to three skill you, and in large scale you'll probably just get deleted from a stray bolt light or two. I'm running pretty standard crystals, 4 piece fumes, bitters, special evasion, high tay, elkar, harfias, vipers, and ignore grapple res. Artifact wise, I'm running all evasion with untouchable. And some of you might be asking why untouchable over blur, since blur gives you more evasion. Uh, untouchable has 150 HP and 2% uh, special attack evasion rate to make up for the loss in evasion. Uh, it also doesn't have a minus 80% all resist to yourself, so you get to keep your resistances. Uh, it's nice when you get shy buffed, since the buffs will do absolutely nothing to give you more resistance because of the negative set effect. 
Uh, if you're a god and never get CC'd or just have big balls, go blur if you want. Build 3, we're running the same crystals, artifact, and lightstone set, but this is just more realistic for people who don't want to spend the time to grind depots. It's <clears throat> 305 bracket with Sissel and an Ominous to help with accuracy problems. If you ran, say, Double Crescent, you'd be 309 for uh, that bracket. I've also seen people run uh, Debo Centaur in this build. Truthfully, I think if you have one Debo, you should just grind out the rest and go for build 2. So, what are the pros and cons of Evasion versus DR? Um, DR Hash can reliably one combo most, if not everyone, no matter what they're running, Evasion or DR wise. But it's lacking pretty big in the tanky department. Uh, you will be squishy if you run DR. The trade off is that you'll do a lot of damage. But with Evasion, you can tank a lot, and I mean a lot. You can probably dive into a 15 man ball helicopter on top of them and come out with half your HP still. But the only downside is you might not kill anyone since you're lacking damage and accuracy. You might even struggle on some DR targets if they build cadres. Let's say against a hard captivation striker, your accuracy is kind of abysmal, so you're going to have to kill them in two or three combos. Uh, you're mostly like an anti-DR rat who just kills classes that build DR. So for skills... Um, the only skills that I lock are Tail Cutter and Paradise Beckons. You lock Evasion for obvious reasons and I choose to lock Rage Transfer and hot bar it so if I fat finger shift X it doesn't look like I'm giving BSR to the guy I'm trying to kill so for cores I'll go down the list Inquisition just never take it ever collapse I could see it being useful for something like PvE but in PvP there are better options not to mention you can cancel it with Breach to get out of it faster, so the Frontal Guard isn't that useful. Dune Core is what I run 80% of the time in small scale, 1v1s in large scale. Uh, I'm just really attuned to using it no matter what, and it's really useful when you're comboing somebody because most of the time you will get CC'd and say like AOS while you're comboing someone, but their team is trying to peel you off of them. I like the extra protection and being able to use Shift F into L and B and be fully protected. Uh, Sin Core is the 1v1 core. You pretty much spam this skill on top of somebody for a protected CC that goes through frontal. It's good at 1v1, but I mean, like, how much 1v1 actually is there aside from defending your spot from like a griefer? So I personally rarely ever take this over Dune. And ensnaring. Don't take it. Uh, it's basically a worse version of uh, Serpent's Coil Core. It's a uh, shorter CC and it's it takes more hits to CC somebody. And finally, Coil. Coil is the large scale add-on or core I mean uh, people use it on stuff like small scale in AOS over dune core but I don't think that's optimal in my opinion for something that small but it's its primary function is to like let you bomb with it um, it, sh it shines in large scale because it's an AOE knockdown on the first hit Aside from maybe T4s and Medias Siege, you're going to press the skill once and probably end up with a 4-piece on like unsuspecting groups of people, and it doesn't take much knowledge to learn how to bomb with Hash, since most of the time when engaging, it'll be something like Purge, Breach, Crown, Fang, and then Coil to finish them off, or CC all, all of them. Bombs. So Dominion Slash is slow and unprotected, but it has a plus 15 magic DP and 9% evasion debuff. It's useful in PvE, but that's about it. 
Uh, Prophecy Blade is my go-to since it's protected. Mirage Assault is another block jump ability we have that will TP you behind someone and do damage. Don't take Alls Mirage. <laughs> uh, Shadow Slicer over uh, Sand Tornado because it's faster and you can swap out of it and cast Rupture or Sea Swap Grab. And to be honest, the only time I've ever used Hand Tornado was at Olin's because I am too lazy to PvE iframe. So I would just hot bar it. But I would not take this outside of PvE. Uh, these are my skill add ons I use for Uncapped and AOS. I've seen some people swap out uh, Fang for more slows and attack speed reduction on ensnaring, but. I think the slow on it is fine already. Uh, if I was evasion, I would basically run this almost exactly, except maybe like eva plus evasion and minus hack on uh, Serpent's Coil. So when we're talking about movement on hash, I think it's almost mandatory to learn how to tab cancel on this class and the TLDR version of how to tab cancel is pressing tab and then a hotbar skill so you can use that skill to get into pre-awakening for more movement and regen stamina. Uh, if I have my awakening weapon out and I wanted to use holiday assault on my hotbar I wouldn't be able to do it normally since I have to tab cancel. But I think first and foremost one of the most essential things to learn on the class is tab canceling. So when you're tab canceling, just press W, walk forward, press tab, and then the hotbar skill. Essentially you're doing that but a lot faster. Uh, do it very slowly at first and find the window to where as soon as you press tab, you're pressing your hot bar skill and it's coming out really fast. Uh, when you're learning tab canceling, uh, you're going to slow swap every now and then. Just practice tab canceling while you're grinding on the class and you'll have it down pretty quick. When you get comfortable uh, just walking and tap canceling, you can start doing it out of dashes and forward movement. So your movement skills on hash are going to be Breach, Sand Warp, Paradise Surge, Holiday Assault, Piercing Tornado, Sand Slicer, Shadow Slicer, and Sin Splitter. You could spam all this in under two seconds if you really wanted, but here's what it looks like when I'm trying to do my burst movement over long distances. Uh, most of the time, I freestyle with whatever is off cooldown though. Like I said, you don't really have to do that all the time since you're going to freestyle with whatever is off cooldown. Some tips when it comes to movement. If you're going really long distances, you can weave space, LMB dash into your movement. You regen stamina and it's faster than your running speed. And pressing sand slicer before breach gives you extra distance on breach. So we have a couple of teleport skills that you can weave into your movement. We have hourglass of death and pre-awakening. Hourglass of Defiance, which is basically just teleporting back to your original location, wherever you put your tornado down. We have Pre-Awakened Mirage, 
the window to hit Mirage is really small. And as far as Awakening goes, we have the Awakened version of Defiance, which is Hourglass of Recall. And the Awakened version of Mirage, we have something called Retribution. Now, this is a frontal guard, and as long as you're holding down LMB, if someone is attacking you, you will teleport behind them and CC them. We have Mirage Assault. And we have Arid Assault. I use all of these pretty regularly, except maybe Defiance and Recall, um, and Pre-Awakened Mirage. Air Assault is a gamble though, since it's unprotected, and it's either going to CC someone, or you're going to teleport to your death. So pick, pick your moments. Tips to keep in mind when uh, using your teleport skills. Air Assault in Awakening, unlike Succession, can't be used unless you have an AP buff. So right now I'm pressing E and I'm not teleporting to him. And to get the AP buff, you have a couple of ways to do it. You can press R and B after any skill, which is Piercing Fang, and it'll give you an AP buff. You also have Hourglass of Death. You have Class Buff and Z Buff as well. Uh, technically, we have Holiday Throw, which you will probably never use this unless you have it hot barred. But honestly, the Magnus skill takes place of Holiday Throw because they're both down RMB. So chances are the skill is never going to get used. But once you have that AP buff, you can press E and use Air Assault and CC people. So another thing to keep in mind is when you're using Hourglass, let's say that you fail a grab, you can teleport back to it to skip the animation. You can do it out of a lot of skills like Coil and Snaring. If you are using Hourglass of Death, you can dash as you're coming down to get a little bit further. So let's say that I am just doing a regular dash. I would go to about here, but if I have someone if I have someone that I can uh, teleport to, I can teleport to them and then go the extra distance as I'm dashing. So something to keep in mind when you are using Retribution. As long as you're pressing LMB as you're getting hit during the skill, you can teleport behind people and CC them, but the way the skill works is it doesn't directly teleport you to the person that's attacking you. It teleports you to whoever your cursor is on. So the last thing that I'm going to talk about before we get into combos and catches is C-swapping. So C-swapping is basically being in your pre-awakened stance and then swapping to awakening using a directional key like A or D and then pressing C at the same time. Honestly, you're not ever going to press D. It's The input is so awkward. Maybe you do, but... I know I don't. So all it is is pressing A and C from pre-awakening. It looks like that. It's super simple, but it's pretty overlooked. Um, not a lot of people really do it. You can start weaving in uh, C-swapping from pre-awakened abilities. So for instance, a pretty big one is Shadow Slicer into uh, C-swap and then grab. So let's say that I'm like right here. I can dash to that guy and then grab him super quick. That's basically what it looks like. It's um, it's honestly not that hard to do once you uh, start practicing it for a little bit. You can start mixing it up with uh, different abilities. You can do Holiday Assault, C-Swap, Shadow Slicer, C-Swap. You can do pretty much anything from Pre-Awakening. and you get a frontal guard as you're C-swapping. Sometimes you're going to uh, mess up your C-swap. Uh, let's say you're in pre-awakening and uh, you aren't 
pressing a direction key or you fat fingered it or something. Sometimes you're just going to press C and you're going to slow swap and it's going to get you killed uh, most of the time. But I think learning how to do uh, C swapping is pretty important on the class because it opens up a lot of uh, opportunities in either grabbing somebody or staying slightly more protected with the frontal guard. You can go into combos from C-swapping after you grab someone too, so it helps out a lot. So now that we're a little more familiar with the class, I'm going to show you some combos that I use, and I'm also going to show you some skills that you can link together. Not necessarily combos, but just skills you can do while you're skirmishing and waiting for big skills to come off cooldown. This is just going to give you an idea of what you can do while you're in the fight to either stay protected or keep your damage up so you aren't pausing mid-fight to S-block and wait for a Serpent's Coil to come off cooldown. So, like I said, a lot of these combos aren't going to be set in stone. You're going to freestyle with whatever you have off cooldown, but that was just to give you an idea of how you can play the class and put together a combo. If you stuck around this long, I appreciate it since I'm sure most of the people watching stopped at tab canceling when they realized they might have to put in some work on the class. Uh, I don't stream that often, but when I do, feel free to come ask me stuff about hash or BDO in general. As of right now, I mainly focus on PvP since I seriously doubt people would want to see me run in circles grinding for hours because I know I fucking wouldn't. Hopefully you learned something and maybe me sharing some of this knowledge might breed some crazy hashes in the future or let a spark for some people to try out the class. Got the signs all of my dreams, I don't never see Z's, wow, 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 this way, cover my body like it's a disease, wow, wow, wow. Yeah,
okay. Okay. DJ Honeybee.